I would go through the garbage, take all this clay out and rework it and end up with, you know, 50 pounds of clay easy. So one day while he was gone, he was sick. I made a table. <laughs> <laughs> Where did this idea of double wall ceramics come from? That was born out of a necessity to do something more creative and, and beyond what other people were doing. You know, if I'm going to be an artist, I'm going to have to come up with something that's a bit above what everyone else is doing. And so, you know, in my sleep, it's like, you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? It's like, what if I do this bowl and put one inside of another, which doesn't really work. There, you, you come up with other issues with that. Hmm. And so I had to try something else, and it was just... just in the midst of doing it on the wheel, said, well, what if I split the clay in half and do it? That was really, um, it, it was like this thing that was challenging, and that's what I needed anyway. It's such a rare form. It's mm -hmm. a 13th century art form from the Ming Dynasty, and it's considered Ling Lung ware, and it really is splitting the clay literally in half and then pulling up each wall um, and then reattaching them at the top. And that way, if, and of course, you don't know that it's a uh, double wall unless you cut the surface out. And that's what I do. And then that's the challenge is, is surrounding the whole entire uh, thing, you know, throwing it, splitting the clay in half, being able to pull it up, you know. Imagine making a bowl with five pounds of clay and then doing 10 pounds to do two walls. It's a challenge. So it's all thrown from a single piece of clay? Yes. It, it, you, it's a plan. It's a plan because even when the clay is drying later on, you've got these pieces that are moving on their own, and one pulls to this side a little more than the other side, and you can have splitting, cracking. It could still explode in the kiln. You know, you, you cut a piece and it's not sturdy enough; it can fall off. You cut the wrong piece, and how you cut it also lends itself to the design. Who else is doing this kind of work in the United States? From what I've found very very few I mean it's, it's a handful mostly men and so I'm, I'm honored to be the only woman at this time doing this and um, the only only other woman Adelaide Robinu who I know of who did it who has passed so you're a special treasure I'm, right here in Northeast Ohio oh yeah yeah <laughs> I like that in itself <laughs> something else for us to all be proud of that's right tell us a little bit about your creative process you know a lot of times it just comes from what I hear um, I, I'm, I've been told I'm very sensitive and so hearing things, hearing how people interact with each other, hearing the news makes me come up with ideas you know I have one piece in particular you know that I'm working on uh, a friend of mine named it and it's called A Call to Arms and that is, it, it comes from you know just the people, the normal people of the world supporting it and uh, our government and our industry and, and the effect that we all have on this world of ours. And so that's how I end up with my ideas for the double wall pots. You know, whereas I wake up in the middle of the night and I can't sleep, I've heard something on the news, it's horrific, how do people treat each other like that? And so I have to, uh, I have to address it. And hopefully in me addressing it and people being excited about what I do and that artwork and that form, seeing an another um, way that we can go about treating our, our fellow man and saying, you know what, ooh, that isn't quite right, you know. But they're, they're now seeing it instead of someone just talking it, but they're seeing it in a physical form, you know, in an artistic form. Tell me about the uh, mammy, the mammy pots or the jars? Ma the mammy cookie jars. Mammy cookie jars. Yes, yes. You know, um, the, the mammies also were, were they, they've come out of a way of me being able to honor this slave woman. You know, I mean, granted, all women, all people, overall, we do a lot in our lifetime. And women do a lot in our lifetimes, you know, supporting our families. Sometimes you're a single parent, you know. Uh, but even if you're not, you're always doing things for the family. And you, you yourself gets kind of ignored. So imagine if that's like that, this slave woman who was always, you know, under duress of, i got to do this, I've got to jump for the master, I've got to take care of this and this. And so here it was my way of honoring her and saying, you know what, this woman has done a lot. And although my sense of humor, I have now kind of, you know, made that, you know, because out of good there comes bad and out of bad there comes good. And so there's not always this bad. You know, there was some joy, you know, in her life, maybe not a lot, but, you know, I have one in particular that I'm doing, and she's holding the chicken, you know, and plucking the chicken, but she's got this look on her face, like, you know, she's content, I'm doing my job, 
you know. So, but that's basically um, the the mammies come from me wanting to honor this woman. Cool. Tell us again what you're some about some of the things you're working on right now. The call to arms, the um, the hand that's really the the most I don't know what you call it outstanding. Uh, the main focus would be we the people, and that's what it says on the arm of it. We the people, and in every language that I could come up with, I've written on it, we the people. And it doesn't always translate to we the people. Sometimes it's, it's us as a whole. Sometimes, you know. So, But that's what the main arm is. And then there's the arm of um, industry and government, which are tied together. You know, industry, corporations, whatever you want to call it, which run around the arm and in between we the people and religion. So it's these three basic arms that have a control on the world. And the effect that we are all doing and having on this world. And we don't think it, about it at all. You know, we just do. And then, um, and we better think about it before it begins to be too late. And finally, what's next for Tracy and me? More, bigger. Um, and bigger meaning, I have to do pieces where people really, it's intense, where they look at it and they, because at some point, you know, we're all on this planet together and we need to recognize that. We're all here. No one's going over there. No one's splitting up. You know, we can't be in this corner of the world. Whatever goes on, we all have an effect on each other. So something that people really look at and can relate to and go, I get it. Well, thanks again for joining us on another Arts Quest. I know I enjoyed myself. It was a great group this month, and we're going to close out the show with some classical guitar from John Marcel Williams, classical guitarist extraordinaire. Remember, if you've got ideas for our show, check out artsquesttv.com. Send in your suggestions. Yes, we're listening. We'll see you next time. My name is John Marcel Williams. This is an excerpt from Hungarian Fantasy by J.K. Mertz. Hi, this is David Kettlewell, host of the Medical Matters TV show. I'm here with a close friend, John Wright of American Ramp Systems. John, tell us a little bit about wheelchair ramps. David, American Ramp Systems manufactures a steel ramp. It's an open mesh metal. It allows snow and moisture to pass through in the winter times, making it the most non-skid ramp on the market. We sell these ramps and we rent the ramps. We offer free home evaluations and they require no building permits. Very good. So when you need a wheelchair ramp, American Ramp Systems, freedom for life.